Welcome to Model Customization in GPSX. No wastewater or treatment plant modeling system or simulation tool is general enough to handle all possible layouts and desired variables. This is why GPSX offers the ability for users to customize their model layout if required. This is an advanced feature and requires the use of the simulation language Axle. The goal of this tutorial is to show users, through a simple example, the steps involved with inputting your own code to create custom variables and use them as if they were included in the original layout. Open the layout completed in tutorial 1. If you do not complete this tutorial, you can either do so now, or select it from File, Sample Layouts, Tutorials. Save this layout under an appropriate name. Switch into modeling mode if not there already. Right click on the influent object and go to flow, flow data, and change the flow type to sinusoidal. Right click on the aeration tank and go to input parameters, operational, specify oxygen transfer by tentering airflow. Additionally, set the total air into the aeration tank to 30,000 meter cube per day. Save this layout and switch into simulation mode. Right click on the influent object and go to output variables, flow, and drag the flow variable to the new graph section to create a new graph. Then right click on the aeration tank and go to output variables, internal variables. Click on the ellipse button next to the actual oxygen uptake rate to access the values from the individual reactors. Drag the first element to the same graph. Open the graph's properties and rename the graph to influent flow in OUR. Unlock the Minimax Fields button and set the flow limits from 0 to 10,000 meter cube per day and the oxygen uptake limits from 250 to 1500 milligram O2 per liter days. Auto arrange the graph. Set the stop time to 10 days with the steady state box checked and run the simulation. Save the model layout. Let's now create some user defined variables to add to this graph. Switch into modeling mode. We are going to add four new variables to a custom macro. This is done using the Axel language. From the main toolbar, go to Layout, General Data, User Files, Macros. This macro window is created when you save the model for the first time. It is separated into several sections denoted by the asterisks. The initial section contains calculations that will be performed before the dynamic simulation begins. The derivative section contains calculations that will occur at every time step. A dynamic and discrete section contains calculations that will occur at every communication interval. Lastly, the terminal section contains calculations that will occur at the end of the simulation. Scroll to the derivative section. We will add some custom user code to this section. The first line with exclamation point is simply a common and is ignored by the Axel translator. The subsequent four lines are used to create new variables and calculate values for them. The first variable is called noise and is a normally distributed random signal. The second variable adds a noise to the OUR and is called OUR with noise. The final two variables, SAR1 and SAR2, represent the specific OUR with and without noise. The noise variable looks a little bit different as it is using the Axel command gauss to simulate measurement noise. The mean and standard deviation are constants and will be specified later. Notice that the calculations make use of two other defined variables already contained within the model, these being OUR LMLSS1 and VSS LMLSS1. These are the cryptic names of the actual oxygen uptake rate and the mixed liquor, volatile suspended solids and reactor 
respectively, from the first reactor and the plug flow tank. Remember that you can view these cryptic names by hovering over the variables label and viewing the dual tip. This custom code can also be accessed in the USR file in the same directory as the model layout. You can open this code and make edits to it in an external text editor if you prefer. Click accept to save these changes. Now let's add user-defined input variables. Go to Layout, General Data, User Files, Constants. We will start by adjusting the menu and header items at the top of the window. These set out the menus and object groupings of the variables. The next two lines starting with the word constant signify that the variables are an axle constant. Following this are the cryptic name, value, label, and unit. This code is saved in a CON file within the model layout directory. You can edit this file in an external text editor if you prefer. Accept this form to save the changes. You will be prompted to reload the GPSX layout. Reload the layout and click Yes when prompted to save. This will cause GPSX to read in your user-defined constants and create the menus associated with them. You will notice that there is now a menu item under Layout, General Data, User, Input Parameters, Noise Variables. We will now review how to add in user-defined output variables. Go to Layout, General Data, User Files, Output Variables from the main menu. We will now enter the user-defined code to create these output variables. This is done in a similar manner as when we defined the user-defined constants previously, with a few notable exceptions. Display has replaced the word constant and a value is not given for the variables as it will be calculated by the model. This custom code can be accessed in the VAR file in the same directory as the model layout. You can also open this code in an external text editor if you prefer. Accept this window to save the changes. Save and reload the model. You will now see two new menu items under Layout, General Data, User, Output Variables. Switch into Simulation Mode. Go to Layout, General Data, User, Input Parameters, Noise Variables. 
bring the average measurement noise value and the measurement noise standard deviation to the input controller section. Click on the input controller property button and set the range for both variables from 0 to 100. Go to Layout, General Data, User, Output Variables, Uptake Variables. Make room for a second graph from the same graph tab that we created earlier. Create a new graph with the two sour variables. Open the graph's properties window and adjust the name to sour with and without noise and ensure that the limits are set from 0 to 1000 for both variables. Drag the OUR wood noise variable to the same graph that we created at the beginning of the tutorial. Open the graph properties and set the limits from 250 to 1500. Auto arrange the graphs and run a 10 day simulation with a steady state box check. Run alternative simulations, varying the noise parameter and observe the impact of these changes on the output graph. Save your layout. You have now completed tutorial 9 and should be familiar with the basic idea and how to set up user files to add a custom code to a model layout.